right, you can move it or change the scale. Or you can also draw it again. Okay, so that's how you cut your meshes. Another thing you can do is to subdiv. This will use the cut mode clarf subdivision by default, but you can change it to other ones if you want, like bilinear or loop. Cut mode clarf seems to be the best. So you can change the subdivisions like one, two, three, four. And the more you have, of course, the more polygons. Okay. So if you want to add some edges, just go to your loop insert and you can add some weight here. Just like traditionally in a modeling tools, you will have something like this. And this area will preserve all the polygons. If you go to sub D, now you will see this area gets smooth, but this area gets sharper. Okay, so I think that's it for the for the poly modeling operations. You can be creative with it and have your own. You know, just by playing with it, you can come up with a lot of cool features, like the trim or something here to remove the inside remove the outside, click accept. Now if you move this one, you will see you have a new mesh. Very cool, very cool. Okay, let's go to modeling, uh, sculpting. So we have our friend here with a big head. What we wanna do is to do some sculpting here. And you have some options to sculpt. You can use the vertex sculpting or the dynamic sculpting. So for the vertex sculpting, uh, you will see you have your size here of your brush. And then you can change the size manually like 0 0.05. Uh, you can manually use it to change like the uh, change the vertices. You can have the smooth here and you have the strength. If it's too strong, just move the, just change the strength and you will be able like to add clay or something. For example, here a little bit, just eyebrows more prominent here. It's like testosterone run wild on this guy. And you can also change the brush type. You can use the move tool so you want to change the nose, something like this, or you can put a smile here. You can change the depth of the face. And now you have a more uh, cartoonish face of this sculpture. Uh, another thing you can do is to use the pinch. You can just like the name, says you will pinch the, the polygons so they can be tighter. And also you can smooth. If you hold shift, you will automatically go to the follow shape here to smooth. And then you can smooth some areas here. And once you click accept, the mesh will change and you will have your new mesh here. However, there are some limitations with the sculpting mode. And this is great for doing some small changes like this. But let's say you want to do some big changes. Let's say I want to move this one. Once I move this one, then if I check my polygons, I lose all my resolution. And this is where the dynamic sculpt comes into place. And this is very similar to Dynamesh in ZBrush. So, if you want to do something like that, just go to dyna, uh, dynamic mesh sculpting, click on move, and then you can do the same, but you will see that as I move along, 
you will be able to see the polygons here. Okay, change the size. Okay, and you can create something that you know can have any shape you want. You can increase the the size of the hair, or you can increase the size of this one and move it here. Click accept. And now you have uh, an ugly version of this dude. This is extremely useful, like if you want to modify some terrain or something, that 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 helps a lot. It's a happier version of that dude. You think so? Could be. I think that's a matter of perspective. <laughs> it is sad. <laughs> yeah, this one is sad. Okay, so that's for the the form uh, tab. Uh, let's check other operations. Let's check the smooth. This is very self-explanatory. This will smooth based on a percentage, and you can change the algorithm. Like you can 